I don't really have an interesting joke or a pithy one-liner to start this video with. I just think Xenoblade games should have subtitles. Now, by this I don't mean cutscene subtitles. Obviously, the games all already have those. Those are nice. Those are good. They're basically necessary to understand the story if you don't speak English or Japanese. Accessibility options are always a good thing, says the guy who can't currently pay someone to subtitle his own videos, but that's beside the point for the time being. As a caveat though, I do think you should always have the option to turn off subtitles if you don't want them. I'm looking at you for this one, X. Because while I personally will always turn subtitles on when I'm playing a game for myself and actually paying attention to the cutscenes, I do think it's better to have them off when I'm recording footage to use in the background of a video, just so there isn't any text not tied to what I personally am talking about on screen, because that can get very confusing. That is why all of my Xenoblade 1 and 2 footage will not have the subtitles on it, because I can just go back and use the event feeder and re-record them without them. Some of my Torna footage is from my original playthrough, so some cutscenes do have subtitles, and X doesn't give you the option, so that's why those are still there for those. Anyway, what I'm actually here to talk about is subtitles on the games themselves, you know, underneath the actual title of the game. So why do I even think these are so important in the first place? You might think this is just past Xeno game bias bleeding over, but that's not entirely the case. In the case of Xenosaga, those games all had different German subtitles in every language version of the game that not only referenced something specific that goes on within the story of that game, but also were all taken from publications by Friedrich Nietzsche. The obvious exceptions are the mobile sort of spin-off sort of prequel game Pied Piper, which is still a German folktale, and then A Missing Year, which is a web video series bridging the gap between episode 2 and 3, which seems to just be content that had to be cut out of the games themselves, and as such didn't really get its own Nietzsche subtitle. The thing is, Pied Piper and Missing Year are effectively similar to Future Connected and Torna the Golden Country in this case, because they are not main named numbered entries in the Xenosaga series, so they do just outright need a subtitle in order to properly distinguish them from the other games, and in fact this is even more accentuated because they're just Xenosaga games. The Saga trilogy is one continuous direct story telling one timeline, while you could at least say that Future Connected is a Xenoblade 1 game and Torn of the Golden Country is a Xenoblade 2 game. What I'm trying to get at with all this though is that the main three Xenosaga games didn't super need the subtitles in order for you to properly understand them. One comes first, then two comes after one, then three comes after two. So you could remove the Nietzsche subtitles and still easily have a followable series, even though the subtitles do make the game sound cooler and are an interesting and important part of marketing. Xenoblade, on the other hand, is very confusing. Not only is Xenoblade 2 the third Xenoblade game, but 2 is not a direct sequel to 1, taking place in a separate universe, which X also does. So you have three different timelines with two numbers and one letter. I think subtitles should be included on these games just so you can tell how they are set apart more. Now we do know from in-game hints and dev interviews that a shared multiverse encompasses all three Xenoblade games, but that still doesn't mean that Xenoblade 2 is a direct sequel to 1, and X is probably not actually Xenoblade Roman numeral 10. The crux of the matter is that while they're all obviously built on the same framework and have plenty of gameplay and thematic through lines, and you can clearly see them modifying, upgrading, and evolving systems as the series goes on, there are still three different stories, and there's not one single master continuity throughout the entire series, so I feel like each world should get its own subtitle to better distinguish and highlight the differences between the three. Now you might be thinking, isn't there another, much longer, much older JRPG series that Xeno basically owes its existence to that also doesn't use subtitles and gets away with it? And yes, you might have figured out where I'm going, Final Fantasy games should absolutely also have subtitles. It's way worse with Final Fantasy than it is with Xenoblade, in all honesty, and that's just because there are more mainline Final Fantasy games than there are Xenoblade games, over five times more once 16 comes out, and the series is also so much older that the gameplay as well as the story has changed a lot too. Just by looking at the numbers, you're not going to know whether you're going to get something like Final Fantasy VII, the ATB battle system traditional JRPG overworld game where you play as eco-terrorists in a highly anti-authoritarian, anti-capitalist story, 
or 15, the open world full real-time battle system game where you're trying to reclaim a monarch's throne. These are two extremely different, almost contradictory things in the exact same series that are only distinguished by a couple Roman numerals, and while I can't think of anything, I feel like there should be subtitles underneath the Final Fantasy and the number in order to better tell you what sort of tone and game and even gameplay style you're going to get from a given thing. Now, of course, each mainline Final Fantasy game and plenty of spin-offs also include a beautiful piece of artwork as part of the logo alongside the series title and the Roman numeral that goes a long way to inform you on the story content and tone of a given entry in the series, but unfortunately, Xenoblade's logos aren't remotely near that standard yet, so I think a subtitle would be a better way to go if you're trying to actively communicate the differences between games. So that's why I think Xenoblade subtitles deserve to exist, but what do I think they should actually be? Well, we're gonna start with Xenoblade 1, because that's how Xenoblade started, and this one is obscenely easy, because before it was called Xenoblade, it actually had a subtitle. If you didn't know, the working title of Xenoblade before it became Xenoblade was Monado Beginning of the World. So just take this, put it onto Xenoblade, remove the word Chronicles because that was a pointless localization addition that just makes both the logos and saying the name out loud clunky and a bit unnecessarily complicated. And there you go, Xenoblade Beginning of the World is a pretty open and shut case. Xenoblade 1 has the most typical epic fantasy feel, not only out of the Xenoblade series, but the Xeno series as a whole, and I think Beginning of the World as a subtitle is a very fitting one for that sort of genre. Probably because it sounds a lot like Eye of the World, which, if I'm allowed to have another diversion, I think this is number three in this video, Eye of the World is still the only Wheel of Time book I've read, and I've been thinking recently, if I could read the first 970-something chapters of One Piece in two months, and then go on to later play the first eight Trails games in two months, and then later go on to play the entire MSQ of Final Fantasy XIV up through the end of Shadowbringers in two months. I kind of want to know how long Wheel of Time would take, but I'm also not sure if I have the time to do that right now, but who boy is attempting. Anyway, back to Xenoblade. Giving it the subtitle Beginning of the World basically keeps the same title as it initially had. I know we all like to meme about Ah uh, yes, the Xenoblade, but in the context of just Xenoblade 1, the Monado could be called the Xenoblade, and very little would have to change, so changing the word Monado in the title to the word Xenoblade isn't a whole lot, and it preserves the exact meaning of the initial title. There's also the fact that Beginning of the World was actually used as the official subtitle of Xenoblade 1 in exactly one place, even in the published English version, and that is, I believe, the Wii save data menu if you own the original Wii disc of the game, where the icon is this amazing icon of Ricky, and the title of the game is actually listed as Xenoblade Chronicles Beginning of the World. So this is technically a subtitle that's already in use, but I think it should be used more often in more places. Also, Beginning of the World and then the sequel, Future Connected, really go well together and really sound like this is a big epic fantasy, and Future Connected sort of sounds like the middle part in a trilogy, so if Xenoblade 3 rumors are true, then maybe I'm going to have to come up with a really kick-ass sounding part 3 subtitle for this. So when coming up with subtitles for the other two Xenoblade games, we're actually left with three different avenues to go down. Do we go with some sort of unified, thematically appropriate title scheme for the Xenoblade series? Do we go on a bit of a more meta step and come up with some sort of thematically appropriate naming scheme for the Xeno series as a whole? Or do we look at the alternate universe where Xenoblade was never named to Xenoblade and think about what the subtitles for those hypothetical Monado X and Monado 2 games would be? This third approach, I think, has the biggest benefits and the biggest drawbacks. The great positive is, of course, that Monado Beginning of the World had a subtitle, so in this alternate universe, Monado X and Monado 2 would be part of a series with precedent for having subtitles and as such would be way more likely to have them. On the other hand, if Xenoblade 1 was not allowed to have the Xeno name, I don't even know if we would have gotten X and 2 in the first place, and if we did, I'm pretty sure they would be vastly different games from the final products we have. I know that Takahashi likes reusing elements from the old Perfect Works story that was developed in Xenogears, but he isn't and has never been the only writer for the Xenoblade series, 
so he might have not wanted to go that hard with those elements in games that didn't have the Xeno title. Obviously, some callbacks and references would still be there, and Lin's Monado hairpins would be the same regardless, because that was a Xenoblade invention and not something from a previous Xeno IP. But I do not think we would have gotten the copious amount of Gears and Saga content that we effectively did in X and 2 if they were Monado X and 2. So, while I do think we could come up with really awesome and really fitting subtitles for X and 2 in the Monado series, I'm not sure how fitting they would be for X and 2 in the Xenoblade series. And then add the fact that effectively Xeno Gears, Saga, and Blade are all subtitles in the greater Xeno franchise, and as such already indicate a bit of the tone and content of a given Xeno subseries, I don't think we need to focus on fitting in within the entire Xeno series and just come up with X and 2 subtitles that go along well with Beginning of the World for one. I'm gonna go with two next, I'm sorry again X fans, it's just kind of how things go with your game, but mostly because two was intended to be a companion piece to one, so I think it should follow a bit closer. I very infrequently see people throw out Where It All Began and Where We Used To Be as subtitles for Xenoblade 2, and both fit reasonably well, but these come from song titles. The opening theme of the game is Xenoblade 2, Where It All Began, and the title theme is Where We Used To Be. So these aren't official subtitles, I'd say Where It All Began is significantly closer because it shows up next to Xenoblade 2 in the opening theme of the game, but that's still the name of the song and not the name of the game itself. Both names, I think, are also a bit more restrictive in what they would refer to than Beginning of the World, because Where It All Began and Where We Used To Be are both mostly referring to the World Tree and Elysium, where Rex is trying to get to, because that's the origin point of Xenoblade 2's world and all that stuff. There's a bit more meta things in there, but in terms of Xenoblade 2 itself, it only refers to that, while well, Beginning of the World is referencing something that encompasses the entirety of Xenoblade 1's universe. So I think we should just invert it and go with End of the World. Yes, this does sort of seem like I'm breaking my rule and giving it a subtitle that does sort of make it seem like it's a tragic continuation of Xenoblade 1. However, in the greater scope of the series, at least now that the DLC is out, I think that is somewhat avoided. Obviously, calling one thing beginning and one thing end makes them seem like sequels, but it also does make them seem like counterparts, and Xenoblade 1 and 2 are obviously counterparts. So, that could seem like an issue, but there's now the fact that Xenoblade 1 has a sequel in Future Connected, and Xenoblade 2 has a prequel in Torn of the Golden Country, so it's a lot more of an indication that, okay, Xenoblade 1's sequel isn't 2, and Xenoblade 2's prequel isn't 1, so I think you can much more easily get away with End of the World for 2 without making it seem like it is a direct sequel to one, as long as you have the subtitles for the other entries in those specific universes available and also part of the conversation. And then we reach X, and I run out of ideas. X is a bit more detached from 1 and 2, and has a much more different gameplay style to 1 and 2, while also having less importance on story. So do you even want to include the word world in the subtitle for this game at all? You could literally just call it a whole new world. I'd say calling it open world is a bit too on the nose, and brave new world is significantly overused. And then you could obviously lean heavily into the memes and just call it a whole different world, but I think it might be a bit better if you did something a little bit different that keeps in the same spirit of beginning of the world, end of the world, while also feeling a bit more sci-fi than fantasy, because while 2 is significantly more sci-fi than 1, it is also still very fantasy, just not as much as 1. X is pure sci-fi with maybe some magic in, but as far as we know, it's all science. So I think something that feels more like a sci-fi title than a fantasy title would work here too. If you want the best of both worlds, you might want to reference something like War of the Worlds and call it War for the World or War of the New World because this is a different planet and there's a bunch of aliens fighting on it. So you could do something like that, but I think that still might be too fantasy-esque, especially coming off of one and or two, because the New World could 
more refer to a new frontier or a new continent or a new titan or something and someone who just thinks about X on the grounds of, oh, it's the same series as 1 and 2, so it must be a lot like 1 and 2, might get a bit confused there. Unfortunately, with only one X game out right now, we can't really make any connections to through lines throughout the series or come up with another Nietzsche-esque thing that you could name multiple X games and have a theme going, so we can't refer to some other specific sci-fi author, a different philosopher, or psychoanalyst or something for this. And while I have some starts, like referring to metal in reference to the skells and things like that, using the word life in reference to the life hold, or even just including the word stars somewhere because we're in space, maybe even taking some inspiration from the very infrequently used subtitle, I thought I believe it's unofficial, for Xenogears of God and Mind, I could come up with a couple things, but I don't really have anything that I'm proud of or that I think is worth even mentioning publicly, so this is one for the comments. Comment your Xenoblade X subtitles now, I guess, because the video's over. And until next time, this is Luxon, signing off.